Hello friends, today we will discuss ramp metering. Ramp meters are traffic signals which are placed at freeway on ramps. And similar to the way signals at loca local intersections regulate traffic, ramp metering signals manage traffic entering a freeway by optimizing the use of available gaps for vehicles to merge. So this can be defined as a method by which traffic seeking to gain access to a busy highway is controlled at the access point via traffic signals. Ramp meters function by controlling the rate and rate is called metering at which vehicles enter the freeway. It helps reduce congestion by not allowing as many cars into the same space at the same time and can help to reduce merging issues that occur when many vehicles try to merge into a lane that is already mostly full. Now here each driver pulls up to the white stop line and the signal will change to the green when determined appropriate by the software. Most ramp meters are designed for one car to proceed on each green light and will have a sign that reads one car per green this lane or one vehicle per green. But some ramp meter systems are set up for more than one vehicle per green also. And where more than one vehicle may proceed on each green light, the signing will list the allowed number of vehicles. So the first question comes in mind is why should it be used? When heavy traffic uses an on-ramp without a ramp meter, multiple vehicles try to merge at the same time. And therefore, the first objective or first benefit of using ramp meter is to avoid multiple entry to freeways. Second, when an on-ramp is metered, only one vehicle is trying to merge, which is more comfortable for drivers on the freeway to accommodate. And it will reduce the number of disruptions to freeway traffic, including slowdowns and collisions. Three major advantages are reported of ramp metering. First, it reduces congestion. Ramp meters are a proven and cost-effective method of relieving traffic congestion, and this reduction can be 5 to 15 percent. Second is improved safety. Ramp areas are accident-prone areas due to unmanaged merging and diverging. Ramp metering makes merging and diverging operation to a freeway smooth and controlled, reducing the risk of accidents arising out of sudden driver decision. Ramp meters generally reduce collision by 30%. And the third is reduced vehicle operating expense and emissions. Ramp metering essentially reduces the number of stops and delays for the freeway as well as the ramps. And therefore, it reduces the fuel consumption and emissions for a vehicle. How it works? There are mainline sensors here on the freeway and these sensors detect traffic in terms of their speed and occupancy and this information is collected on continuous basis and then this is transmitted to a ramp meter controller here. This ramp meter controller will process this data and will estimate the gap between the two vehicles. What would be the gap between these two vehicles when they reach here? Then this information is transmitted to traffic signal here and then this signal will display either red or green in response to traffic conditions fed to the ramp meter controller. The demand sensor on the ramp monitors the presence of vehicles behind the stop line. The end of the queue sensor here, it detects when traffic extends past the on-ramp and it will trigger the signal to speed up. When queue at the metered ramp cannot be accommodated, the metering rate is increased or meter is capped in off position or signal will display green to flush the queue. Then there is an advanced sign here to warn the drivers that meter is on. This controller will control the traffic movement on the frontage road or the surface street. This is how a ramp meter works.
Next is metering strategies. Metering strategies can be defined as the approach used to control the traffic flow on the ramps. The capacity of an uncontrolled single lane freeway entrance ramp is 1800 to 2200 vehicles per hour. Now since ramp metering is a traffic flow controlling approach, it decreases the capacity of the ramp. Three ramp metering strategies are generally adopted. One is single lane, one car per green. Now this system allows only one car to enter the freeway during each signal cycle. The length of the green plus yellow indication is set to ensure sufficient time for one vehicle to cross the stop line. The length of red interval should be sufficient to ensure that the following vehicle completely stops before proceeding. A typical cycle length is taken as the smallest possible cycle for sec of 4 second with 1 second of green, 1 second of yellow and 2 seconds of red. And this produces a meter capacity of 900 vehicles per hour. A more reasonable cycle is around 4.5 seconds which is obtained by increasing the red time to 2.5 seconds and this increase in red would result in a lower capacity of 800 vehicles per hour. The second is single lane multiple cars per green. This is also known as platoon metering or bulk metering. This approach allows two or more vehicles to enter the freeway during each green indication. But it should be remembered that bulk metering does not produce a drastic increase in the capacity over a single lane one car per green operation. And this is because this strategy requires longer green and yellow times as ramp speed increases which results in a longer cycle length. Consequently, there are fewer cycles in one hour. Two cars per green requires a cycle length of 6 to 6.5 seconds that will result in a meter capacity of 1100 to 1200 vehicles per hour. The third is dual lane metering. In dual lane metering, two lanes are required to be provided on the ramp in the vicinity of the meter which is reduced to one lane at the merge area. And this system or this strategy provides a meter capacity of 1600 to 1700 vehicles per hour. Next is design considerations. Now installation of a ramp meter to achieve the desired objectives requires sufficient room at entrance ramp. Generally, three spaces are considered. There must be sufficient room for a stop vehicle at the meter to accelerate and attain safe merge speed. Then sufficient space must be provided to store the resulting cyclic queue of vehicles without blocking an upstream signalized intersection. And third is the sufficient room must be provided for vehicles discharged from the upstream signal to safely stop behind the queue of vehicles being metered. Now see this figure. Here this dotted line shows the ramp length. The queue detector here controls the maximum queue length in real time. Therefore the distance between the meter and the queue detector defines the storage space. For a dual lane ramp, the ramp storage should also consider the transition from one lane to two lanes and dual lane storage space. This transition zone should be at least 23 meter long and the length of dual lane storage should be sufficient to store a minimum of four cars per lane and that will be approximately 31 meter. Three distances are important here. Safe stopping distance, storage space, space and acceleration distance. That is the space required or the length required to accelerate from a stop position to the merging speed. In the case of minimum stopping to back of the queue, this distance, safe stopping distance, this can be calculated using well-known equation that is x is equal to vt plus v square upon 2gf or 
x is equal to 0.278 v into t plus v square up to 254 f when v is in kilometer per hour and here is small v is in meter per second and if you put a value of v as 55 kilometer per hour this x will be around 73 meter this x is measured from the center line of the cross street in the interchange now this is the minimum distance to be provided x as a safe stopping distance then second is this storage space now this storage space will depend upon the metering strategy whether it is for single lane with single vehicle release per cycle or for single lane with bulk metering that is three vehicles per green or it is for dual lane metering assuming single lane storage now these graphs are suggested in astro book on joint design of highways now this is the q distance to meter this one is for dual lane this is for bulk metering and that is for single lane now you can see here that the minimum single lane storage length is approximately 170 meter and if the storage length of design vehicle is 7.72 meter then this distance will be sufficient for storing around 22 vehicles now this equation is used to calculate the length of single lane storage distance 0.250 q minus 0.00007422 q square for q less than or equal to 1600 vehicle per hour here l is the single lane storage distance in meter on the ramp where expected peak hour ramp demand volume is q the third one is distance from meter to merge this distance acceleration distance and this distance is provided so that vehicles can attain a suitable merging speed after being discharged from the ramp meter astro provides speed distance profiles for various classes of vehicles as they accelerate from stop to speed for various ramp grades this is for 3% gradient for 0% gradient on the ramp and minus 3% gradient on the ramp and that is distance to meter this is the freeway merge speed so depending upon at what speed a vehicle will merge with the freeway vehicle or freeway traffic these distances can be provided these are given in this table also that for a given merge speed and gradient on the ramp you can pick a value of distance from meter to merge so these are the design elements of a ramp meter thank you very much for watching this video you can write your feedback in the comment box